I'm sure you're all wondering, what does a person who has specialized in Creek history for almost all her career, uh, what does she do in talking about women's history, specifically about women's suffrage? Well, as Mr. Spears has said, I uh, work at the Alabama Department of Archives and History. And in 2020, we were gearing up for a huge centennial, 100 years since the 19th Amendment was ratified, which gave women the right to vote. Of course, things kind of went south in 2020, so all of our plans kind of went by the wayside. But we didn't want to give up. We still wanted to commemorate this great moment for women's history. And so we opened up in August a new exhibit called Justice Not Favor, Alabama Women and the Vote. And it's up at the archives right now, open through May. And in this exhibit, we wanted to look at what the story of Alabama is. So the 19th Amendment is a federal amendment. So this commemoration was a national one. So there's a huge story about Susan B. Anthony and Alice Paul and all of these different women coming in. But what is Alabama's story? How does our state fit into that national story? And so we went about doing research for that. And that's what I want to come here today to talk to you about. The women who fought for and against women's suffrage. The 19th Amendment is passed by Congress. And it says, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Now, it keeps going. That's, that, that's the meaty part, right? That's the part that really matters. But it's important to know the second part of it. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. So this is passed, but it needs to be ratified. And at this time, they need 36 states to ratify the amendment before it will become a part of the Constitution. In September of 1919, September 22nd, 1919, Alabama rejects the 19th Amendment. And Suffragists said, okay, we kind of assumed that this wasn't going to go in our favor, so they're focusing other places, but anti-suffragists also continue to focus their attention on keeping it from being ratified, but it passes through the Tennessee legislature, and they are the 36th and final state needed to ratify the amendment. Everything starts to change for women. They're now involved in politics, and it goes on and on and on, and if you come to our exhibit, we go all the way up to when the first woman was a governor, all the way through all the elected offices, constitutional offices. And this should probably be like where I end it, right? But I told you, Alabama's story is complex. But if you've noticed one commonality between all the women I've talked about is that they're all white women. What about African-American women? Some African-American women are able to register to vote in 1920 but most are turned away at the registrar's office. There are accounts in Birmingham of standing in the line and people in the line telling them you're not wanted here and kicking them out. So this is kind of this bridge, right, between the earlier movement in the 19 teens and for another movement of voting rights activism in the 1950s and 60s, showing that the story cannot end in 1920. Now, you may have heard of Amelia Boynton Robinson for her capacity in this, the Dallas County Voters League, in this uh, moment here, but you also might have heard of her from another very famous incident. If we go to the next slide, the Selma to Montgomery marches. She was one of the organizers, especially that first march that happened on March 7th, that today is more known as Bloody Sunday. And this image of her, this is her, being carried away made national, international news. And it was one of many different instances that really pressured the federal government to pass the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And much like what happened with the 19th Amendment, after the Voting Rights Act, you have a surge of voters in the African American community. So in honor of the commemoration of the 19th Amendment, we had two new bronze statues 
commissioned. One of Patty Ruffner Jacobs, the other of Amelia Boynton Robinson. Two women from two different generations with the same goal in mind. History is made up of each one of us making the choice of how we can make a better future for our children and for ourselves. And something I find very inspiring is that this future was not inevitable. It was not set in stone. These women fought against all odds to make a better future.